by definition an herb is any plant of any size or any part of any plant that uh, serves a medicinal or uh, fragrant fragrance or spicy role. From Debbie H.A. World Health Organization stats, uh, it's a little bit alarming that really 80% of the world's population uh, have not been exposed to modern medicine and that they almost have to depend wholly on uh, medicinal herbs not available to them. And even in this country, of, of the 150 top uh, medications, over half of these 150 have at least one uh, natural compound in them and, and some more. Herbs that were used from the earliest of times have persisted uh, to the present day, if, so to speak, stood the test of time. H-E-R-B-A-L-S. And these are actually uh, written uh, dictionaries, so to speak, that explain the whole uh, gamut of any given herb, herb that is listed from how to grow it, from where it uh, originated, uh, what kind of illnesses it addresses, and uh, just almost everything you need a, a cookbook, so to speak, as far as how to prepare uh, <coughs> how to prepare these remedies. And I think it's interesting that one of the very first of these so-called herbals was the, was uh, Sumerian, and they they were written on clay tablets. And this was something about 4,000 years ago. But along about that same time, uh, China had, had come in with herbals, and Egypt was uh, along in, in that uh, same era. When we, when we talk about herbal medicines, we, we're, not, we're not speaking about uh, dietary supplements. We're talking about actually cures. It, it's amazing that, uh, and I had no idea about this, but actually uh, dietary supplements in this country is a $15 billion business, in, uh, and that's a, with a B, $15 billion. So it's, it was not to actually uh, serve man, but it was actually self-defense for the plants. Because plants, uh, unlike uh, mobile uh, beings, they can't, they can't uh, move, they can't run, they can't fly. So they have to have uh, incorporated in their uh, being substances that will deter predators. And we're primarily talking about carnivores and, of course, uh, various insects. So uh, I think this is something to keep in mind. From an even uh, more distant uh, date in South Africa, uh, again with DNA analysis, it was found that the bedding material uh, was, was uh, found to contain an herb that is a still regarded as a good mosquito uh, repellent. Malaria has been a big problem through the ages and uh, to, to this day uh, from uh, 77,000 years ago the same uh, type herb has has actually persisted and, and uh, apparently still works. I'll, I'll start with the distant past, and I think it's interesting. And I can relate it being a dentist. Uh, there were uh, Neanderthal secretions that were analyzed, and DNA is, is an important player in all this now. That uh, the per the person uh, prior to the prior to his or her death, uh, had a good, a good number of fragments of chamomile. Even to this day, we think of chamomile tea. So through, you know, through the millennia, these things that work uh, are passed down and are, are still, at one time I had chamomile growing in, in my garden. I know many of you are familiar with it. In recent years, it's been found that uh, a substance from Texas, which is uh, from the yew tree at Y-E-W. Uh, and then there's a, a plant, a tree actually, that uh, actually I have one growing in my orchard and it's in the gum family, Camptopeca. <coughs> and it's been a prominent player in cancer uh, 
research. And I think it's uh, the, the latest I'm able to, to gather on Camptothica is that uh, it, there have been some side effects and maybe they're having to refine it further or maybe a substitute, I, I don't know. The recent past, uh, we started getting into uh, herbs like, say, digitalis. And uh, foxglove was a, foxglove is not a native plant here, but it was in, in Europe. And it, it, of course, was a well-known and tried and true heart uh, stimulant in the late 1700s. Later, uh, from uh, uh, poppy, was uh, it was discovered that uh, morphine, which uh, was, <coughs> was a powerful sedative, was made, and then they further uh, synthesized morphine and, and got heroin. Used in, in, in this willow bark, salicylic acid, and hence aspirin. And a aspirin, uh, has the distinction of being the first uh, recorded medicine in history that was presented to the public in tablet form. And, and then uh, the bark from, I think it was a South American tree, uh, produced uh, quinine could be, uh, could be rendered. And of course this was uh, a godsend as far as uh, malaria and what it, it would do. I've handpicked uh, 10 and we'll, and we'll get started and most of these have medicinal uh, value as herbal medicines. Some of them have dual purposes. The first one here is a, and almost all these are native plants, but uh, Cletha alnifolia, which means nothing to you. It means it's altar leaved in shape, but it's, it's pepper bush, uh, and it has more than just one purpose. It has, has a, uh, at least a three-fold uh, purpose. But the one, uh, the one thing is that uh, the seed uh, capsules, as you'll see on the left of the slide, were by the colonists uh, actually used as a pepper substitute. There's also a pepper weed, but we're not talking about that. This is a pepper bush. Uh, I think that, uh, with the innovation of different spices and peppers, this is sort of fallen by the wayside. However, it remains a, a beautiful flower and it remains a prime honey forage because the, uh, the blooms which you see here on your right, as well as the leaves, are very sweet. Uh, sweet pepper bush is one of the synonyms. And uh, these bloom uh, start about late May and they're a really good honey bee forage. Honey bees and other bees as well. Uh, the older uh, folks, they call it soap bush because you could take, a, you could crush up the leaves and you could mix it with a little water and you had a soap. Saponin is a, a word for soap forming. Which in fact, so you could actually wash with so-called soap berries. Uh, number two. Okay, this is a, a vine. It's, uh, again, common uh, in North Carolina in general. Not quite as common right around here, but it's uh, called Carolina, uh, Coculus Carolina. And the Coculus means snail seed. The, this uh, plant is a vine, a twiny vine, and it has uh, red fruit. And the seed uh, within this fruit uh, is almost looks like a snail shell, the uh, the uh, circling. So it's it's called snail seed. And that's a, a good way to identify it. But uh, uh, <clears throat> the thing about this, uh, most parts of this uh, Carolina moon seed or snail seed are poisonous. Uh, but when we say all parts are poisonous, it it means. Uh, it, the connotation is that uh, no matter what happens, it's poisonous if you breathe it, if you taste it. Uh, but you do not get a, a dermatitis from this or the smoke. It, it's only poisonous if it's ingested orally, but not if handled and so forth. So, uh, uh, but we don't have to worry about that. Uh, but, uh, but it's a beautiful vine in the clusters. Uh, now, in earlier times, 
it, it was used as a arthritic uh, arthritic uh, medication uh, as a so-called blood tonic. I don't know exactly what that means, but I do know what diuretic means, and it, it was a fairly powerful diuretic. Uh, but these properties didn't come uh, primarily from the leaves or the fruit. They came from the roots. Uh, it has it has heavy, thick roots, and you may or may not know this, but in most given plants, uh, the if there if there are toxins, alkaloids, uh, phenol, they're stored in the roots. So the roots are much more dangerous than say the leaves or the uh, berries. Uh, so these roots were processed, and they got these herbal medications to treat these to treat these problems from this Carolina moon seed. Uh, 